Hello, everyone out there. Thanks for tuning into this very special Faunalytics uh, Facebook Live. Boost your invertebrate advocacy with these five data points. Uh, normally, our uh, Facebook Lives are kind of like a summary of some of our original research, uh, or they might be a discussion uh, with another researcher about their research. Uh, but we wanted to do something different on the occasion of releasing our invertebrate fundamentals. And uh, so we're doing <laughs> a bit of a listicle in Facebook Live form. Um, and in this uh, video, we're going to talk about uh, five specific data points uh, that are contained in the invertebrate fundamentals uh, that might help you do uh, your work uh, and advocacy for invertebrates. So uh, with no further ado, let's get started. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is uh, insect eating. Um, insect eating is something that a lot of us in Western countries don't really think about very much uh, because it's not as common here as it is in really the majority of the world. Uh, approximately two to three billion people consume insects around the world uh, already, and that's a not insignificant number when you consider that um, something like, you know, uh, you know, 3,000 to, to 3,500 uh, insects are killed for every uh, one uh, cow that's killed in the world. Um, simply put, we uh, you have to kill a lot more insects uh, to provide the same amount of protein um, as you would a uh, as you would get from say a chicken or a cow. Um, in the next 30 years, by 2050, it's expected that the average person will eat about 14 more percent, uh, 14 percent more meat than they do today. Uh, that is a significant increase, and uh, a lot of people are starting to think about um, how we can get get people to shift uh, from eating um, land animals and uh, farmed animals to eating insects. Um, of course, if you take insect eating. Uh, and if you take insect sentience seriously, uh, that's a problem. In 72.1% of studies in a recent literature review, uh, they found that masculinity was a key positive influence on the acceptance of insects as food among Western audiences. What does that mean? That means that if you are someone living in Europe or North America, um, chances are you see insect eating as part of a, you see the the willingness to eat insects as part of uh, having a masculine identity. Um, that means that if we're doing advocacy to try to reduce the, uh, the amount of insect eating, uh, that we're going to want to look at masculinity as an issue to be addressed uh, in that process. The next thing I wanted to talk about was the exotic animal trade. So uh, it's something that uh, Faunalytics has uh, looked at in, in various ways before. Um, we did an analysis of um, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service data uh, from uh, 2000 to 2014. We looked at 15 years of data and found that there were 3.2 billion live organisms um, uh, trafficked uh, in the U in the United States alone, just coming into the U.S. Um, when it comes to the exotic animal trade, and when it comes to the exotic trade in invertebrates, uh, arachnids are one of the most popular species. Uh, there are more than twelve hundred species of arachnids that are kept and traded as exotic companion animals around the world, and a large majority of them, sixty seven percent, are taken from the wild. This is something you can use in your invertebrate advocacy uh, by, you know, including in your materials that if you are getting arachnids or, or if you are participating in the arachnid trade or keeping arachnids as pets, uh, that those species are likely coming from the wild and that at the scale that the exotic animal trade is happening, um, harvesting those species from the wild can have a significant ecological impact. Next, the importance of pollinators. Now, pollinators are invertebrates that most people tend to really like, and I personally really like them as well. Uh, one of the things that I loved learning in this uh, faunalytics fundamental was that um, 
bees really only make up about uh, five or six percent of pollinators. Uh, they are uh, among a huge range of pollinators that includes species such as flies, as well as mammals um, and birds. Um, but what I wanted to mention today is that um, there are a hundred crop species in the world that account for about 90% of human food production. This is from the uh, Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN. 71 out of those 100 crop species depend on pollinators like bees, moths, and butterflies for survival. Um, these are pretty significant numbers, and they can pretty much immediately be used in your advocacy uh, for pollinator species uh, by highlighting just how dependent we are on them. As most animal advocates know, there are uh, a variety of endangered species around the world. Uh, the IUCN Red List is a great resource to look at if you are trying to find whether a particular species is threatened, at risk, um, or at, at greater risk of extinction than others. Um, and invertebrates are not immune to, uh, to that status. Approximately 40% of terrestrial invertebrates are currently at risk of extinction, and that number is expected to rise due to climate change. The climate emergency is a real one that we are grappling with every day, and 40% is a really significant number. We are not talking about, uh, you know, one or two percent here and there. Uh, that wouldn't be acceptable either. Uh, we're talking about close to half of terrestrial invertebrates being at risk of extinction. That is a huge number. And when you're doing your climate uh, advocacy uh, and your invertebrate advocacy, it's something that I think you will definitely want to mention. And finally, I want to suggest that you focus on octopi. Uh, octopi are really amazing an incredible species. And uh, they are actually one of the only invertebrate species, uh, thanks to EU Directive 2010-63 EU, uh, which regulates animals for scientific research and educational purposes. Um, it specifically uh, includes cephalopods on its list of uh, of species that are regulated. Um, pretty much all other invertebrate species in uh, used in research, uh, used in labs, uh, are not regulated whatsoever. They are not counted. Um, the amount of uh, fishes and fruit flies and all other invertebrate species you can think of uh, are just not counted. Uh, they're not counted in the US. They're not counted in the EU. They're not counted anywhere. Um, but octopi are different. Unfortunately, though, there has been a consistent rise in research papers published using octopi as research subjects, and those papers reveal that the number of countries and institutions doing research with octopi is growing. Um, what does that mean? That means that it's not just that more octopi are being used because we don't have those numbers for uh, all countries. It means that there are more and more countries every year that are doing research on these species and more and more institutions within those countries that are doing research on these species. Um, even though octopi have some protections in the EU, in many places in the world, they have no protections um, and they're being researched on uh, all the time. Uh, octopi are also uh, up for, uh, have been considered as a possible species to be farmed. Um, and we shouldn't forget octopi as a member of the large class of animals that we call invertebrates. They really are amazing, and they are a species that has a bit more charisma <laughs> than your average invertebrate. And so uh, generating sympathy and positive feelings for octopi can possibly help you provide an entry point for other people um, to be able to uh, to be able to do, um, and to be able to recognize the sentience and, uh, and importance of other invertebrate species. And that's that. Thanks for tuning in to, uh, the Faunalytics, uh, five data points to help you boost your, uh, 
uh, invertebrate advocacy. And I'm happy to answer any questions if there are any, but I'm not sure if there are. Okay, there are no questions in the chat. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, this has been a fun experiment to uh, see the slides behind see the slides behind me as I'm uh, discussing uh, the topic. And I'm really looking forward to doing more of these. So thanks again. And uh, hope you have a great day doing your invertebrate advocacy. Thank you. <laughs>